If you want to add RESTful web services to your application, then these next videos will be essential for you because this will be covering how to implement RESTful web services using Apache CXF and Spring's REST controller. We will also be emphasizing how Spring Boot 2.2 platform supports the JAX RS 2.1 specification through its Jersey Spring Boot Starter module. Also part of the discussions will be how to provide API metadata and documentation to these endpoints using Swagger 2 project. And also we will be providing complete details on how to consume these endpoints using the Spring's REST template client API and some third-party plugin like OKHttp. Additionally, we will be integrating some web frameworks to consume and test these RESTful endpoints and also we will be introducing JUnit 5 platform and Spring Boot test framework to run these RESTful services. Let us now start the first topic which will be about implementing RESTful web services using Apache CXF Spring Boot Starter module. Web services are APIs wrapped in an HTTP request which can be accessed by any platform, devices, or clients. Now, Spring Boot 2.2 has a built-in starter module which provides less overhead in configuration, setup, and implementation of RESTful web services. Let us now give you a background on how to implement REST services using CXF Spring Boot Starter module. Once the CXF Spring Boot Starter module is registered in the Gradle build file, the Spring Boot 2.2 platform will automatically instantiate a CXF servlet, which will require us to set some configuration properties in the application.properties file. After we have registered the CXF Spring Boot Starter module for the JAXRS specification, together with its required and updated Jackson plugins, we now need to configure in the application.properties file the CXF path property, which is very essential in the instantiation of the CXF servlet. Now that this path is configured, this will serve as the base URL pattern for all of our endpoints. Also, we need to enable the CXF auto scanning of its models, providers, and components through the CXF JAXRS classes scan property. Together with it, we need to register these packages, which contains all these objects to be auto scanned by CXF, through the CXF JAXRS classes scan packages property. Now, this property has a comma delimited value, you see here, which can depict more than one packages if necessary. Let us now start the implementation of our RESTful web services by having two sub-packages in our application here. First, the service sub-package, which contains all the endpoint interfaces, which will provide the service definition to all of our web services. And this definition contains the URL path of each service, the type of resource needed to be produced or consumed, and the type of service request when to call each of these web service. And the second package here contains all the implementation classes of our endpoint interfaces, which will give us all the transactions and resources needed to be exposed. Among the web service implementation here is this get web service, which will provide us a list of user profiles in JSON format. From the simulated record of profiles from this form data config class, I use string API to filter all the necessary records of data that needed to be exposed by each of this get web service implementation here. And whenever we run each of them, it will provide us all the records in JSON format. Not only JSON format, web services can also expose string and XML responses as well, just like in this um, get this approved user implementation here. If we access this user's not approved URL, it will provide us a list of profile records in XML form. And it will be an XML formatted response. 
Just be sure that you have the appropriate JAXB provider for your XML response and also a model object decorated with an XML root element annotation. By the way, all collections such as list and map here can now be directly serialized to JSON or XML through our Jackson API plugins and dependencies. There are also web services that can accept path variable using the CXF path param annotation. So if we run this web service here with some path variable input, it will provide us this record there. Now, aside from GET, we can also implement web services that can be accessed through POST service requests, PUT, DELETE, and PATCH. But unfortunately, we cannot run the following web services until we reach the portion where we will be using client APIs to execute these endpoints and capture the HTTP response. I always use POST web service to add records either through form handling transaction or through some client APIs. And then for update transaction, I use put web service. And then for deletion of certain records, I use delete web service. And lastly, to update some portion of the whole record, I used the patch web service. This video has given us a clearer picture on how lightweight it is to implement any kind of RESTful web services using Apache CXF Spring Boot Starter module.